Welcome everybody. Um, my name is Brian Hefflinger and I'm a board certified neurosurgeon that's been practicing uh, for 25 years outside of residency. I'm here with my son, Kevin. How are you doing today, Kevin? Doing good. Okay. So today uh, we thought we'd talk about trigeminal neuralgia. It's something that people ask about all the time uh, on our social medias and the comments and everything. And it's a pretty brutal disease or is it, is it a disease? Um, it's, it's a condition, but it's a bad condition. I mean, there are people who've committed suicide over the pain from this condition. So it's really some of the worst pain. It's thought to be some of the worst pain that you can experience yeah, so we thought as a human like, being. We thought we'd do a deep dive for in this episode. So forever more in the future, we can refer yeah. people to. So it's not just like a quick video, giving a, a quick overview, mm -hmm. but we kind of go a little more in depth. So we're going to talk about what, my dad's going to talk about what the condition is. I'm going to ask him some questions as a lay person. I, I'm in business, not in medicine, like my parents. And then talk about what various treatment options are and how maybe just typical people, what you've seen or you've had other surgeons talk about maybe. So trigeminal neuralgia is a fairly rare condition. It affects less than 200,000 people um, a year in the U.S., but certainly it's something that neurosurgeons see. You know, it was first um, accurately described in the 1750s, and they kind of described it as a facial spasm, but a painful sp facial spasm. And it developed the term tic douloureux, which really has stuck around through the years. Um, and what it really is, it's, just, it's, a, it's a, a pain condition that sends electric-like shocks or lancinating pain into your face on one side. And it's been described as some of the worst pain that a human being can experience in their lifetime. And, and there's been many documented cases of people who have committed suicide because the pain can be so bad. So a little bit about the anatomy of the trigeminal nerve. Um, you know, it, it affects your face and the trigeminal nerve comes out of the brain and it gives branches to your face. And, you know, to get technical, there's three branches. There's the um, ophthalmic branch, the maxillary branch, and the mandibular branch. And so the ophthalmic branch gives sensation to your forehead and your eye socket and in some of your scalp. And the maxillary branch gives sensation to your cheek and upper jaw. And then the mandibular branch gives sensation to your, your lower jaw and teeth. And so when people have these lancinating episodes of pain, it will, you know, shoot into those distributions, mostly into the V2 and V3, which is the, the cheek and the lower jaw area. That's where it occurs the most. So is this, is it just shocking things like lancing shocks in your face or just can it go to other parts, you know, because nerves are interconnected yeah. in my thought? Or... Yeah, so these nerves are only um, to your face. So trigeminal okay. nerve only feeds the whole area of the so, face so, in the, by different distributions so like we talked about. it's usually localized to the face and yeah. beyond just like the, the sensations that people feel, do they get stuff where like their face droops or anything like that or is it just internally they feel it? I mean, they can have a little bit of facial weakness at times, but it's mostly a painful phenomenon. Um, you know, and how is this set off? I mean, it's sad for people because it can, it can become so debilitating because just chewing or eating can set off a, um, an episode or the wind hitting your face can set off an episode or brushing your teeth. And so these poor people with the pain, they avoid eating or chewing or when it's windy, they don't go outside and they're so scared to brush their teeth. And so it's really a debilitating, um, and do you think, since it is pretty rare, I mean, less than 200,000 people per year in the United States. Do you think some people just have no idea what they have or like it might get confused with, is there anything it gets confused with? Yeah, it, it's a good question because um, it does get confused. I mean, a lot of people will go to their dentist when they're having pain into their jaw or their teeth and they'll see their dentist and the dentist sometimes will, you know, pull, pull a tooth or do injections um, not knowing it's trigeminal neuralgia. Yeah. Um, so that's probably the main, the main fooler would be, a, you know, a, you think it's a dental problem. So for someone who may be listening to this or who has seen people in the past or felt anything like that where they think it could be potentially trigeminal neuralgia, what would you think in your own opinion uh, that they should do? What would be a good step for them? Yeah, I mean, if anybody's having that severity of pain, you should definitely see your primary doctor first. Let him get an eye on what's going on. And then often you'll initially get referred to a neurologist. So I'm a neurosurgeon, but um, so I do surgery on the nerves, but you, a neurologist is someone who treats the nerves medically. So often people get sent to a neurologist and then from there, you'll probably get a workup, right? So, so often you know, they'll do an MRI of your brain and, 
and, and um, different tests to try to figure out is it trigeminal neuralgia or not. Once, once the diagnosis of trigeminal neuralgia is made, which is through a clinical diagnosis of your symptoms and potentially your uh, imaging findings, then the first treatment is usually going to be medications. And often there's anti-seizure medications, believe it or not, that are used first for this. And um, you know sometimes that can control things well enough and sometimes that doesn't control it well enough. So if medications don't work, um, you know, then you're, then you're on to looking at surgery. And, um, you know, common surgeries that are done would be, um, what they try to do is to some extent is, is um, injure the nerve. So, yeah. the, so the, the, the before, nerve... Before we yeah. dive into surgery, sure. can we take a step back quick? Um, what are some of these tests or indications beyond like the clinical finding? You said looking at imaging or yeah. stuff. What would be like a few examples of that? Yeah, so... So when you do the imaging, so the most common reason for people get trigeminal neuralgia is there's a compression of the nerve, right? When it comes out of the brain, um, which is called the brainstem. So when the nerve comes out of the brainstem, it's usually an artery or a vein that's up against the nerve that causes this condition. And so there's a surgery to treat that. But on the MRI, what you're really looking for is you want to see, do you see that artery or vein up against the nerve? Sometimes people can have a tumor, unfortunately, you know, and it turns out to be that there's a tumor that has caused this, or they could have a brain infection um, that caused this. Yeah. Some people can have trauma from trauma in the past that started this whole process off. So the MRI is really looking for other pathologies, including the most common pathology, an artery or vein. So the, the, what I'm uh, hearing is basically it's not clear cut. They, they kind of are taking multiple different factors in and then can kind of, with the severe pain, narrow it in and think most likely you have trigeminal neuralgia. Right. I mean, you have to, you have to use how, yeah, you have to use how the patient presents. And once you have a think, once you think it's trigeminal neuralgia, then you try to get an MRI to make sure, is there a tumor or something else like that? Or just to try to, to identify what may be causing it. Okay. And then, uh, to go back, uh, you were getting talking about, uh, if medications didn't work, then there's potential surgery options. Yeah. And so there's different surgeries. So, you know, one type of surgery is, um, doing what's called a rhizotomy, and that's basically trying to injure the nerve. And what you do is you can either do a balloon, like you can put a balloon up against this nerve through a procedure and inflate the balloon for a minute or so, and then deflate the balloon. That will injure the nerve, and that will help with the pain. Some uh, procedures put glycerol directly into the nerve, inject glycerol. Um, other procedures burn the nerve, but those are all procedures that can help kind of temporarily, they can last for months and years, but they don't last forever. So they typically need to be um, performed again. Okay, so those are the procedures to uh, kind of injure the nerve. What about the other procedures that you were alluding to? Yeah, so another procedure is called radio surgery, and it's not true surgery. It's radiation, focused radiation therapy right to that nerve. Um, and so the purpose of that, again, is to try to injure the nerve in a way which will help stop the episodes of pain. That specific procedure, the radiotherapy, which is focused radiation beam to the nerve, that can take you know months to a nerve to take effect. So it's not as immediate as the other procedures that we do. Okay, and with so it's kind of sounding like with these procedures, the one can last a couple months to a year. There is no long-term cure right now for trigeminal neuralgia. Well, that's not completely true. I mean, the, the, the most definitive pre procedure that you can have. So often you lead up to the more difficult procedure. So, you know, often people will go through these, these procedures. They might start at their dentist and get an injection into the nerve in the jaw. And then if that doesn't work and medications don't work, then often they get the other procedures. But if, if everything fails, there is a procedure called a microvascular decompression. And I've done a fair amount of these. And what you do is it's, you have to take off a piece of bone over the back of the skull and using a uh, magnification and a microscope, you dissect your way deep to the, where the brainstem is, where the trigeminal nerve comes right off the brainstem. And then using you know, microsurgical techniques, you, you look for that artery or vein, typically it's one or the other. And when you find that, then what you gently do is you put a Teflon pad, of like a little piece of soft gauze mm -hmm. between the nerve and the blood vessel. And usually when that procedure is done, um, you know, it's 90 plus percent effective at treating trigeminal neuralgia for the long term. So it's wow. a pretty definitive procedure. It's the most invasive, but it's been the most promising procedure for long term relief. 
Yeah, because that's not kind of a typical thing in like all surgery. You want to go from the least invasive uh, methodology procedure yeah. and see if each one works, you know, starting with medication all the way up yeah. to start doing simple procedures. And then only if those things don't work and yeah. uh, relieve the, sim- or the pain and symptoms, then you get to the most invasive. Right. And sometimes, you know, I, I know when I was in training, we, we did a lot of these and, you know, we would always put that gauze, but we would also cut a portion of the nerve with scissors. And we did that just to make sure that we were injuring the nerve enough so the trigeminal pain went away. And you have to be careful. Obviously, there's sensory fibers and motor fibers that go to your muscles of mastication for chewing. So the, the, the motor nerve is always underneath the sensory nerve. So you had to be very careful that you weren't cutting the motor nerve. But um, I think nowadays, a lot of people don't cut the nerve at all. They just put the Teflon in between, and that, that seems to do the trick. Yeah. And they think maybe it's the pulsation of the artery up against the nerve that causes the, the problem with trigeminal neuralgia. Yeah. And obviously, this is all just your opinion. Um, your it is. I mean, there's going to be so many other experts on trigeminal neuralgia who have other feelings about things and what procedure works the best and, and a lot of other information they could probably give you that I don't. I mean, I don't specialize in trigeminal neuralgia, but I know of it and have done procedures yeah, this, um, like this for it. And so it's my, my opinion about just in general what trigeminal neuralgia is and what there is out there to offer. Yeah, I was just trying to give that as a disclaimer of like, do, we do these, you know, we're trying to be educated, you're trying to be educational, you're providing your opinion as a neurosurgeon, but it's not at all 100% truth, like nothing is and everything's always debated, right? But yeah, and there's, all, yeah, there's always purposes. different, yeah, there's always different um, opinions on things, but I think that's a pretty general, generalized overview of trigeminal neuralgia and, and its symptoms and, um, you know, how it can be treated. But I think if there's anybody out there who has pain like this, um, definitely go to your doctor, have them examine you. And then if they think you need to see a neurologist or need an MRI, you go from there. Yeah. Um, but you don't have to live with it. A few follow-up questions. Cause so, so when we talk about severe pain, I'm assuming we're talking about nine or 10 here. You said it's some, Oh, I think it's pain. a, I think it's on 11 out of 10. I mean, people describe it. It's a, it's a, it's like a lightning bolt shooting through your face how people into your teeth and okay. jaw so if someone's like if you have pain in your face and you only you think it's like hurt someone it's probably not this versus it, it's like all out pain yeah basically. well the way you differentiate trigeminal neuralgia so if somebody can have a toothache that's throbbing that's there all the time probably not trigeminal neuralgia trigeminal neuralgia is shooting episodes of excruciating pain that can last typically a few seconds for some people, it's worse. It can last up to a minute or two, but most people just get these few seconds of electric shooting-like pain into their face, mm-hmm. excruciating, and then it goes away. But people can have 10, 20 episodes a day. I mean, it could be... And it's almost... Uh, that sounds so bad. You probably can't even, like, operate normally. Like, if you're having that episode, well, and th- and you think about do a normal thing, right? Yeah, and think about you're, you're, you're worried when I eat and chew, is it going to set off that pain? And so, you know how it is with anything. If something yeah. causes pain, you don't want to do it. So it's very, very debilitating to people because they're so worried that the next wind that hits their face or the ice that they're drinking in their mouth, you know, chewing in their mouth or anything can set it off. And we talked about some of the, you know, these potential surgeries and other methods um, to try to help uh, cure it or reduce the symptoms and everything. What are, I mean, I think people would be curious, what are some potential risks, uh, what are like likelihoods on stuff like that? Do, do you, just, just in your opinion? As far as what, having a procedure done? Yeah, just around, like stuff like that. Um, yeah. Like how, do you think, is it super risky or what, you know, with where we've come, how, I mean, medicine's progressed yeah. a long way. What do you think? Because, you know, a lot of people are scared all the time with any surgery of any type. So I don't know, just your thoughts on that, I think would be helpful. To the first procedures I talked about, the rhizotomies, where you try to, you know, injure the nerve a little bit, um, you know, the, the risk of those are basically, it, a lot of it depends on your surgeon if he knows the anatomy. Because when you're putting a needle up to the base of the skull where this nerve comes out, you got to know where the needle is. Because there's arteries there, there's other nerves. Um, and so if somebody puts the needle too deep, or they hit an artery, you know, you can have a complication and you can have bleeding and you can get in, you know, there's a risk of infection. So they tend to be safe procedures, but obviously there's risk with everything. Yeah. Um, Just like the basic risk of surgery, then like you're saying, the risk of infection, the risk of blood loss, like that's typical of pretty much every surgery. But these are very common procedures that are performed, I think, and and, and they're pretty safe. You probably want to, just like anything, when you find a surgeon, you know, try to get some reviews about, like, look up reviews of them online. Make sure that they kind of don't have to specialize and make sure they do a fair amount of these and do them routinely. 
and any recs that you yeah. can get from other people yeah. or if they've so I, I think that's always the huge thing of just picking any surgeon but then yeah like you said i would for me what i was thinking is i want to make sure this person does it a, a decent amount at least it's not something they do every once in a while yeah, and with any surgery i would say that i mean people ask me how many you know how many surgeries have you done how, how many of these have you done and i don't ever get offended i mean they have the right to ask that and you know if i've only done a few of something i'll say yeah i'm not the guy who does the most of these so you may want to see somebody who specializes in this but if i do thousands of one procedure i let people know you know once well, for because i've heard you say before too um when something's more rare like there's times where you like refer something to ohio state or a more a place where there's more specialized too not for specifically trigeminal neuralgia but right. just if there's a rare condition that comes and it's not something that yeah. you are specialized. well because you know i mean we're neurosurgeons right so neurosurgeons are pretty specific in general but you know neurosurgeons there's a lot of specific um categories of neurosurgery you know there's yeah. neurosurgery that's that's specific to brain tumors and and vascular malformations and tumors and so you know when you go to a institution like you know mayo clinic or cleveland clinic or ohio state you know there are surgeons there that only do brain tumors or they only operate on the spine or they only do um, congenital abnormalities so sometimes it's not a bad idea to see somebody who specializes in that area if if where you are the surgeon is a general neuros neurosurgeon but doesn't specialize in that yeah. in your condition yeah i think that's uh good to know um but yeah, hopefully, I, I mean, I just learned a decent amount of trigeminal neuralgia because I always see people commenting stuff about that or they want you to talk about it. So I thought we'd do this podcast episode, do a pretty, a somewhat deep dive on it or just good general overview. Yeah, I think, I think it's a good general overview. I mean, you could certainly dive a lot deeper than this, but I think that gives you a general idea of what trigeminal neuralgia is and um, kind of like what the various treatments are along yeah. the way and, and what to do if you have facial pain or eye pain or you know um tooth jaw pain pain in your t tooth in teeth yeah that's um <laughs> shooting sorry yeah. um then you know then, then you should see your doctor yeah that was a good episode i think for people if they do think they might have it or if it's something they're living with um and let us know if you if you guys thought this was helpful um if you know of anyone with trigeminal neuralgia maybe share the episode with them yeah. And let, let us know if you want us to do more episodes like this on various topics where uh, my dad might, you know, has subject matter expertise. I hope everyone has a great day and uh, talk to you later, Dad.